Namaste. I am Dr. Naresh Bana and today we are going to talk about the home of highest mountain in the world. Yes, the majestic Nepal. Friends, Nepal is one non-coastal country which is endowed with immense natural resources. From highest mountain ranges to green forests, perennial rivers, hospitable and culture-rich society, Nepal has it all. It is the only country on planet where the landform changes so rapidly, so rapidly that starting from lowest point of 60 meters above mean sea level in south, one can reach the highest point on earth in north at about 8,850 meters above sea level, that is Mount Everest all within a straight distance of just 160 kilometers. Surprised? Yes, that's the fact. Due to such steep gradients, there is humongous potential for hydropower, for tourism and many other things. To acquaint you and before we proceed further, have a look in just about 30 seconds and enjoy the beauty of Nepal before we move forward. I recently attended the third Nepal Investment Summit held at Hotel Solti in Kathmandu from 28th to 29th April 24. It was a highly successful event with more than 2000 delegates and more than 50 countries participating. With that, let me share with you how Nepal is developing or planning to develop. The country has decided a roadmap for themselves to graduate to middle income country by 2030 and move up the ladder to high income level by 2043 and achieve net zero status in another two years that is by 2045. These are no doubt ambitious goals and need a focused approach and structured implementation of development activities. Infrastructure remains the key sector so essential to achieve the stated milestones. It is generally agreed that Nepal would need to invest a budget equivalent to approximately 10% of its GDP in infrastructure itself to achieve the middle income status and SDG goals by 2030. But the actual investment is just about 4% of GDP, which is grossly inadequate. Friends, the public-private partnership route has become inevitable to mobilizing resources and to achieve goals of development. To deploy PPPs, it is important to have suitable legal framework in place. And Nepal has undertaken a lot of reforms in recent past. I participated in a panel discussion on 29th April, well in investment summit and was asked to review the PPP specific legal framework of the region. Here is the question and my response therein in the summit. Very much pleased to be inviting up on stage uh, Chairperson of South Asia Chapter, WAB, Dr. Naresh Bana, who is an expert in PPP with the government of India. 
Ladies and gentlemen, with expertise in contract management, project financing, and bridge construction, he has led significant projects like the uh, Kazigund Barmula Rail Link and Dhalkut Port private, uh, privatization. He holds a PhD degree in PPP from Noida International University and executive study program from Harvard Business School. So my next question is to Dr. Bana. Um, you have, your recent works have included comparisons of PPP legal frameworks in the region. Um, how does Nepal compare to others that you have studied in, in South Asia? Thank you, Grishma ji, honorable chair of the session, and all of us who are assembled here. As far as PPP laws in the region are concerned, we have quite a spread and depending on the, because here we are dealing with public assets and every government is obliged to not only take care of the interests of the investor but more so for the public and accordingly as per their needs and priorities the laws have been framed. So as we look at the map, I'll go in a clockwise manner. And first is Kingdom of Bhutan, Royal Kingdom of Bhutan. They enacted the law in 2017. And doesn't mean that they were not having the PPP projects before. In fact, one of the most successful hydro power project is Dagachu hydropower project in Bhutan, which was proposed through ADB after the Kyoto Protocol and has been a success story. Then we have Myanmar, who also enacted their law between, started in 2015 and finalized 2017, but due to the problems in the country, not much is being done there. And then when we look at Bangladesh, yes, there's another success story. Their law has come in 2017, and you would be happy to note that in 2020, World Bank reported that Bangladesh was one of the maximum recipients of uh, infrastructure funds from outside the country. And the PPP law must be having some role to play in that. Then we have Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka does not have any specified PPP law. They have their tender process part two, which is nothing but they have modified their tender process to suit the external investment in infrastructure projects. And accordingly, they are dealing the PPP projects through their existing rules and regulations and arbitration provisions. Then we have Maldives, small country, and as per their priorities, they enacted Special Economic Zone Act 2014, and then to further take care of their requirements, in 2019 they came up with Unsolicited Proposals Act, as far as rules are concerned, they are taking care through their existing legal framework, all the rules, the regulatory part, and also the arbitration if there are any disputes. Then we have Pakistan. They also enacted their law in 2017. And there are specific rules for the PPP with regulators and arbitration procedures. Afghanistan also enacted in 2017, but it is hardly being used. As far as India is concerned, a lot of PPP activity, but there is no specific PPP Act. In 2005, Cabinet Committee approved certain procedures, rules, to be put under Niti Aayog and at the central level and state level there are 
structures which handle the PPP projects to the model concession agreements and various policies. There are regulators and there are standard arbitration procedures and one of the largest activity is happening in the region is because it's a large economy as well. Coming back to Nepal, the 2015 PPP policy has just been reviewed for uh, maybe ap for applying it to subnational, provincial and municipal level. But the act of 2019 is quite comprehensive and as the previous panelists had mentioned, in 2022, by, uh, they have taken care of many things, the gaps which are there, and today, as I see it, it is uh, well equipped to handle any PPP investment in any sector in Nepal, and maybe, like we, I mentioned about Bangladesh, Nepal will be the next to receive one of the largest foreign investment. Thank you. With that, we come to an end of today's episode. For more, please wait for the second part of this podcast on development of Nepali infrastructure through PPP route. Thank you so much for viewing. I'll be soon with you again. Till then, keep viewing and do remember to subscribe. And also, if you like this video, then like it. Namaste and have a nice day.